Welcome to Real Economy's trip around Europe's macro regions from the towns and countryside of Croatia to the Danube River, all working towards economic cooperation and growth. On the show, we explore the Adriatic and Ionian region of which Croatia is a part of. What does the strategy mean in terms of economic growth? And what kind of lessons have been learned from fast macro regional hubs like the Danube? We'll then put the burning questions of the who, what, when, where and how to the woman in charge of it all now, European Commissioner for Regional Policy, Corina Kretsu. Our everyday lives are about going to the market, buying our food and earning enough money to lead a decent life. So Gianni Maggi set out to explore what is a macro-regional strategy and how it translates for everyday people, like here in Croatia, which is part of the Adriatic and Ionian region, address common goals and challenges. But most importantly, what it means for economic growth for the four EU and four EU candidate countries involved. If you and your neighbours have some problems, it's easy to solve them together. The same applies for a group of areas or even countries in a specific geography, which together form a macro-region. A macro-regional strategy is when, through cooperation and collaboration between different regions, enterprises, citizens and politicians, a macro-region tackles common challenges. Using existing funds and resources, the strategy aims to unite Europe's people in the common goal of building up a particular region. The Adriatic Ionian is one of the regions where cooperation between countries is in progress. Croatia, the last country to enter the EU, sits at the heart of this region. Local entrepreneurs are looking forward to common policies to improve the economic landscape in the big industries. Gordana Duranja is the head of the Croatian Employers Association. The priority would be the creation of new, quality and productive jobs, something that proves a challenge in the current context, as the unemployment rate has continued to increase since the start of the crisis. Promoting competition would make the countries of this region more attractive for investment, which would have a positive impact on the financial sector and thus economic development. The countries that border the Adriatic still have significant differences in terms of income per capita, employment rates and infrastructure facilities. Cooperation could at least in part overcome these differences. Let's see what are some of the possible projects in the framework of a common strategy for development. The Adriatic Ionian strategy that the European Commission launched last December aims to boost tourism to the region, creating the necessary transport links, setting up a network of well-serviced marinas and including hinterland destinations. For the environment, specific projects will promote responsible fishing practices and the development of sustainable aquaculture. With the coordination of ecosystem-based activities and investments in water and solid waste treatment plants, the goal of an internal energy market will be achieved through cross-border electricity and gas connections. Croatia, like all the other countries bordering the Adriatic, is eager to discover new opportunities following the economic crisis, which brought years of growth to a halt. Economic recovery is now long overdue in a country where tourism brings in around 7 billion euros a year. But the local ecosystems are under pressure and climate change is also a threat. Flooding, drought, soil erosion and forest fires are all increasing realities, issues that should be addressed with a macro-regional policy. We asked the Croatian Minister of Tourism what is needed. We have to be more and more competitive. This is the crucial. And uh, the administration of national countries of uh, Brussels has to be much more efficient, faster, elegant in developing this, this uh, and realization of these uh, programs. Of course, that in this stage, I think that the, the, the main catch is how to make our companies in private sector able to, to reach the funds. The Adriatic and the Ionian Seas are a natural gateway to southern, central and eastern Europe. Future development of the region can bring benefits to much of the continent. 
We've traveled to Brussels to speak with the newly appointed European Commissioner for Regional Policy, Corina Kretsu. These strategies sound very good on paper, but when you try to make EU and non-EU countries work together, what are the checks and balances in place to make sure we see results? We have this chance to put together on equal footing member states with non-member states to have uh, uh, a common approach uh, to see how things, uh, uh, problems are solved within the more developed countries. There will be always space to improve, but uh, in the end, these strategies uh, are done by the member states. Our commission role is to enable that, this dialogue and uh, uh, to give uh, guidance. You've got member states that have very different politics. They have different issues. How do you make them talk to each other? Adriatic Ionical was uh, one of my first activities. And I was very happy to meet all the foreign ministers from eight countries for uh, uh, EU countries and for non-EU countries. For instance, tourism. There are Greece, Italy, other uh, Croatia countries that uh, they have what to offer in terms of experience in tourism that could share with Serbia, that could share with Montenegro, with Albania. It's very, very important to have this kind of environment when they can not only talk but do things together because we also have these funds, cohesion funds for the member states and also uh, pre-accession funds for the non-member states. It's uh, our moral obligation and duty to see real results, concrete results in terms of reducing disparities. We need money, but we also need to share experience. So how would you make political leadership talk to each other, let alone public and private sector? Of course, it's up to some ministers, to the political leaders, and also to the local administration and other stakeholders to decide and uh, put together all the resources. Alpine strategy is one of the transit region, but also with a lot of problems as, of transport. Transport links uh, are not stopping on one border or another. So it's our common problem, and uh, we we are living in a globalized economy and uh, I don't think uh, it's every country in Europe that can uh, solve uh, by uh, uh, itself uh, these problems. We'll pick up on our conversation with Commissioner Kretsu, but let's focus on the more established macro region of the Danube that brings nine EU and five non-EU countries together that face the same challenges, environmental, untapped shipping potential and energy connectivity. Now, better navigation on the river could increase cargo traffic, bringing potentially 8,000 new jobs to the stream. Add tourism to that and the jobs number jumps even more, as Sarah Chappell reports. Like all the EU macro-regional strategies, the Danube Region project is focused on building prosperity, ensuring stability and protecting the environment. But at the core of the strategy is a need to connect this region, particularly by realising some of the untapped potential of the Danube River itself. So we hopped on board for a lesson on how Austria's Via Danau is trying to up by 20% the Danube's cargo traffic by 2020. Via Danau is a lead partner in the network of Danube waterway administrations. All of these waterway administrations were operating uh, by different standards and by actually are operating by different national law. And one of the major achievements uh, of Nevada and Nevada Duo was that uh, we have harmonised the, the way we are working within the navigation. The Danube strategy has coordinated more than 500 projects, many that have worked. But the river's flooding in 2013 brought out serious flaws in communication and cooperation. Even backers like the European Commission criticised project members, saying drastic improvement was needed. All this with the goal of navigating between river needs and economic growth, mobilising commercial ties all down the river without additional EU funding. It will not uh, solve major problems uh, of unemployment or, or industrial competitiveness. But it can start a process uh, where industrial organizations, uh, uh, chambers of commerce, uh, cities, universities along the Danube work together and learn from each other. Macro-regional strategies are hard to quantify as successes or failures, since unlike most EU projects with strict checks and balances, it's simply a cooperation movement. 
Commissioner, the Commission's own report has highlighted many weaknesses, coordination being one of them. That was highlighted during the Danube floods. Um, how is that being addressed going forward? Our assessment showed that uh, there, were, there is a need for more cooperation and uh, exchange of information. We also have uh, uh, weaknesses, but in the same time we have success stories. The Commission now is advising uh, all member states and all, uh, involved in these macro-regional strategies to, to focus on some fewer uh, priorities in, because I think uh, um, focusing on results is much, much more important than uh, spreading in 11 or 12 uh, priorities. How do you actually have the enforcement power if there is no access to new funds and it is mostly these member states relying on cohesion funds? These macro strategies um, uh, have this... Uh, uh, rules, not new institutions, not new funds, not new legislation. But uh, the strength is putting the forces together, the brain, the experience, uh, what they want to achieve together. As I said, it's not always about money. It's never been about money. This policy is about solidarity, about uh, uh, doing whatever it takes to reduce the disparities and to improve the life of the people across Europe. We are now in the end of the of the programming period 2007-2013. We have eight countries with less absorption, less than 60% absorption. So they had the money, but they didn't have the ability and the experience. And now we hope in the new programming period the lessons were learned. You are the new commissioner. What kind of reform do you want to see and do you want to implement? My first priority will be to see that these strategies uh, uh, have concrete results in terms of jobs, economic growth, improving also administrative capacity, which sometimes is a weakness for some regions. So it's very, mu very much dealing with the life of the people. That's a wrap on a winter trip through Europe's macro regions. We'll see you next time.